Hello all. Um, so this is the lecture on calf weaning and you might wonder if the lecture is calf weaning why there is a picture of a baby. Um, you see weaning is not only for calves but also for human babies. So weaning simply is the process where we transition uh, a mammal, any mammal, you know, be it a human baby or a cow, uh, cattle baby, calf, right? Transitioning from a milk-based diet to a solid-based diet. So as babies, we have all undergone weaning. And now as a dairy farm managers or veterinarians, we have to manage weaning of dairy calves. Right. Uh, so, so remember, remember uh, weaning is not just transitioning from milk based diet to a solid based diet but the missing word here is very important it's smooth transition right so anybody can transition a calf or any animal from a milk to a solid food Right, but remember, as veterinarians, as uh, you know, following good management practices, you have to ensure smooth transition. Right, that's why we are spending time on learning about weaning. Yeah, otherwise we don't have to spend so much time learning about weaning. You can just stop milk whenever you want and start solids whenever you want. Right, but that's not the idea. You have to ensure that is smooth transition. Right. Uh, from a milk-based diet to a solid feed, solid diet. Right, so what happens if you don't do a smooth transition? Right? So if the transition is not smooth, uh, there will be something called a post-weaning slump. Right. So post-weaning meaning after weaning. Slump usually means, uh, you know, like a drop, a drop in something. So what, what do you think? post weaning slump refers to right so you need to know what causes this post weaning slump and then the the consequences of the post weaning slump what really happens what are the short term and long term consequences right so spend a minute to think about those what might be the this slump that we are referring to right um, so, according to, you know, this particular website, right, um, causes of growth slumps after weaning uh, are, you know, multiple sources, right? Um, so, so we, we all know, right, so at, at weaning, of course, you know, milk stops, right? So, transition from milk-based diet to a you know, solid based diet, right? And then that's a change of diet, right? So anything abrupt, right? So I've, I've said this repeatedly, not only with calves, even with adult animal management, horse management, abrupt diet changes are not recommended, right? So the, the leading cause for colic in horses, for example, you know, is abrupt dietary changes, you know, be it, um, acidosis uh, in cattle, impaction, you know, all of these can be triggered by abrupt dietary changes. Right? So you have to make sure there is a smooth change, there is a gradual change, right? And it's not only the diet that changes, right? So there is, when, when, when we talk about diet changes, it it could be milk, it could be forages, it could be concentrates, you know, from calf starter to other concentrate feed. So all of these can change, right? So you have to ensure that these changes are not abrupt, right? You have, you have to spread it out over a period as much as possible to prevent this slump, right? And then not only dietary changes, but there's also going to be changes in the housing right so we during the last lecture we learned about calf housing we learned that they live in these uh, individual pens right so they're not going to live in individual pens till they die they have to move out of those individual pens they have to move into uh, you know communal pens 
right um, so that change traditionally was also uh, done together with weaning right so that adds up to the dietary changes and causes a lot a lot, lot, lot of stress to the calf right uh, because you see when they are in the individual pens they didn't have the social interaction right but now the, if you straight away take them out of the individual pens and put them in communal pens or in group pens suddenly they have all these other calves uh, and you know that that is not something they were used to so that that is also a stress right and so all these lead to a drop in the feed intake and as we know a drop in the feed intake is not a good thing at all it leads to a drop in growth rate uh, a drop in everything uh, basically so if the growth rate drops the the milk yield uh, calving edge right all of this get gets pushed back pushed back right so then so that is not a good thing so that is what we refer to as the growth post weaning slump right so not only growth but all the other uh, production and reproductive parameters also get pushed back right uh, and then also inadequate nutrition right so after weaning right uh, or even you know during the last stages of weaning you know, uh, I have, I've mentioned this earlier also, you know, our farmers have a tendency to give the best quality feed to the lactating cows. Because, you know, if you, the, your whatever your investment is, it yields results quickly when you feed lactating animals. If you give high quality nutrition to a cow, the milk yield, milk quality will improve. Whereas if you do the same investment on a calf, the farmer is not going to see the returns immediately because you know calf is not going to uh, give milk right soon um, so therefore you know not only in our countries but even in you know, western countries uh, certain farmers have a tendency to uh, you know uh, to take an approach where they don't give the highest quality feed to calves right However, we have to remember that gaining weight uh, during the early stage is the cheapest, right? So look at the different feed conversion ratios at different body weights, right? So while calves are young and small, feed conversion ratio is best, right? So basically here, that means every to gain one kilogram of body weight the calf only has to eat two kilograms of feed but when it's 100 kilograms to gain one kilogram it has to eat as much as three kilograms of solids right and then uh, at 500 kilograms it has to eat as much as 8.5 kilograms to gain just one kilo so the take home message from this table is that you know you need to try and gain the weight at an early age right so even if you have to spend some extra money at this stage it's a lot cheaper in the long run right so this is very important to remember uh, if you become stingy right when you are feeding a calf in the long run it's going to hurt you right so these are the different stresses and what these stresses cumulatively do is that it can weaken a calf's immune system right and of course when the immune system is weakened right you have all these problems of you know diarrhea uh, pneumonia digestive problems right poor feed conversion etc etc right so you have to make sure that there is no post weaning slump right so to make sure that there is no post weaning slump you need to make sure there is a smooth transition from milk based to solid based diet right so that's what we are going to talk about today right so um, so how do you do this smooth transition 
when is the right time right time to wean calves is it age is it two months or three months or is it body weight gain right for example you can say 200 uh, percent gain after of birth weight right so whenever the calf doubles the weight or triples the weight uh, we can wean it or do you say when calves have a average daily weight gain of you know 500 grams or 750 grams or whatever you know that's the time that you wean calves or is it to do with you know rumen being developed and being ready for you know processing forages or is it you know when calves start ruminating regurgitation so this is often uh, 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 um, an indication of ru ruminal development right so if calves are ruminating at the beginning of course calves are not ruminating because they are not regurgitating they are not they are not uh, consuming forages right but if the rumen is developed right and they will start regurgitation so that that's an indication that the rumen is developed or is it you know calves consuming a certain level of concentrates right so this is what you need to know but what, what is the exact criterion that you have to use to wean calves uh, to know that okay now is the time to facilitate this smooth transition right so this is what you need to know right so actually out of all these uh, what can, can you uh, wean based on age or body weight gain or average daily gain or is it the rumen development what should dictate uh, weaning uh, which what is the decisive factor out of all this right? so remember we said uh, the reason we give milk uh, at the beginning a milk based diet is because the stomach the complex stomach is not developed to receive uh, forages or rough edges right so uh, that's why we talked about all these room and development right so the, the critical factor that decides if a calf is ready to be weaned is the proper development of the rumen, right? Which is ready to digest forages. So we talked about all these different stages of rumen development. I remember we said the abomasum occupies a large proportion at the beginning and then eventually the rumen takes over, right? So at this stage, of course, uh, the rumen is not ready to receive or digest process forages right so your criterion uh, should be the development of the rumen if the rumen is developed and ready to receive forages it doesn't matter whether the calf is six weeks eight weeks 12 weeks or 16 weeks you know that is when you should wean calves right so remember that it's not the age it's not the body weight gain, it's not the average daily gain, it's not the health status, uh, it is the development of the rumen, the readiness of the rumen. Is the rumen ready to uh, process forages? Yes, if it is, okay, then that's when the calf is ready to be weaned, right? So that is very important to remember, right? Um, so under poor management, if you wean based on age or body weight gain whatever right so the rumen may not be sufficiently developed it may not be ready to receive uh, forage so what happens is okay you feed uh, foragers however the, the nutrients cannot be properly digested or absorbed and it just bypasses the rumen and goes into the abomasum right so on the one hand, nutrients get wasted, and on the other hand, you know, uh, abomasum can get enlarged, right? Because it just simply goes to the abomasum, and abomasum is unable to digest all these forages, right? Uh, but however, if you keep giving uh, these grasses, right? So like I said, you it cannot get digested, meaning 
uh, it can't ferment the rumen cannot ferment the 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 forages properly so it's like slow fermentation instead of you know rapid normal uh, fermentation and of course poor absorption because there are no papilla papilla is but creates the, the improves the absorption surface area right um, so animals develop something called pot belly right and pot belly leads to you know um, substandard growth and all these long-term effects of delayed puberty breeding first calf milk yield all those good things right so a properly developed um, rumen mucosa would be like a thick carpet right where there are all these uh, you know papillae uh, thousands of papillae um, you know able to uh, absorb right uh, all the nutrients capture and absorb whereas a poorly developed uh, rumen with little to no papilla and a smooth surface are unable to uh, absorb all these nutrients and pep, uh, absorb right because the surface area is very poor right so it is uh, such animals that are prone for pot belly and other complications right um, so then the question is right so how do you know that the rumen is developed and ready for weaning uh, are you going to insert an endoscope every time uh, to find out if the rumen is developed or uh, is there are there any you know other external indicators to find out if the rumen is developed right so how do you know is it the age you know can you say by a particular age okay by three months the rumen develops regardless of your management practices if the calf is three months rumen is developed now you can be uh, so that is obviously wrong that is not that uh, birth, you know, doubling of birth weight or tripling of birth weight, you know, has no relationship with the rumen development, right? Uh, you can have uh, very well developed animals with high growth rates, but with very poor development of the rumen, right? So it's not the average daily gain either. It's not the health status. You can't say, okay, these calves are very healthy and three months, so their rumen must be developed. You know, none of that is true right um, so the real indication is these last two factors right so mainly this one if the calves are consuming you know depending on the breed 750 grams to one kilogram of calf starter a day per day you know that is an indication that the rumen is developed and ready to digest foragers right so typically textbooks will say one kilogram of calf starter per day right? that is mainly for host infusion but if you have you know smaller breeds uh, jerseys or jersey cross infusions right then you might be you will have to you can go with this 700 750 grams per day right uh, and then you know that means they are ready to be weaned, right so remember uh, smooth transitioning from milk based to solid based right and to do that smooth transition the rumen needs to be properly developed and the external indication of proper rumen development is concentrate consumption right of calf starter if they eat one kilogram of calf starter a day that tells you the rumen is properly developed and ready to receive foragers and therefore you can facilitate if you take the proper management practices you can facilitate the smooth transitioning from milk based to solid based diet right of course you can do this at six months you know very smooth transition but then do you want to wait that long or do you would you rather wean as soon as possible right so that that's the question uh, right if you wait till late what are the are there any benefits or if you been early are there any benefits right so generally the the pre-weaning diet is more expensive than the the post-weaning diet right so the reason is because uh, pre-weaning diet 
you know it's milk based you know in 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 terms of you know sri lankan uh, context a liter of milk so you you feed like 3 4 liters of milk a day per calf right so 4 liters of milk uh, based on you know now nowadays a uh, milk is sold from up to you know 120 rupees a liter right about some farms uh, as low as 70 rupees some farms as high as 120 rupees a liter right so let's take an average of uh, 100 rupees per liter so if a liter of milk is 100 rupees uh, when you are feeding 4 liters of milk that's 400 rupees for the milk alone right and add to that calf starter maybe another 75 80 rupees so 780 rupees add to that the minerals vitamins you know 500 rupees right but for an adult animal you know with 500 uh, rupees you can feed a hell of a lot right so you can feed you know a grass at the rate of you know 4 or 5 rupees per kilo you can feed concentrate you can feed 8 to 10 kilos of concentrate with um 500 rupees right so 10 kilos of concentrate we usually expect uh, if an animal consumes 10 kilo grams you know that animal is producing at least 20 liters of milk so 20 liters of milk is 2000 rupees at the rate of 100 rupees per liter right so by investing 500 rupees in an anim- adult animal the farmer is able to get 2000 rupees worth of milk right um but whereas with so with calves but we are investing 500 rupees what are you getting you know you are j- getting just uh, 750 grams of body weight gain per day right um so the 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 prevening the bottom line is that the prevening diet is very expensive compared to the post weaning diet right so therefore you want to try to wean as early as possible right so remember that is the take home message you have to try to wean as early as possible right so uh, people have tried to wean as early as 4 weeks right um so there there are some uh, uh, publications right and they showed that uh, weaning as for early as 4 weeks can save up to 55 dollars which comes to about rupees 10000 uh, right compared to late weaning right uh, but of course you know this is really intense i don't recommend uh, any of you try 4 week weaning in sri lanka Right, so there are some certain advanced things that you have to do. Um, so, but at least, uh, so in Sri Lanka currently, people are weaning. If you take small to medium scale farms, they are weaning ages three months or more. Right. So, if we can bring it down to two two months, about you know eight weeks, I think that will be a, a fantastic achievement if you can achieve that in this small and medium scale farms. Right. even then so even if you don't be in at 4 weeks even if you be in at 8 weeks you will still be saving a lot of money to the farmer right so remember if you are a farm manager or a veterinarian your goal should be to decrease weaning age right not as much as 4 weeks right but maybe i try to bring it down to at least 8 weeks right um so like i said Uh, so uh, you can't be happy okay i i wean i wean all my animals at 8 weeks right uh, but it has to be a smooth transition right so smooth transition meaning that the rumen is ready right you can't just say okay i wean my animals at 2 uh, months however they are, if the r- rumens are not ready to receive roughages then you have not done a proper job right so that won't be a smooth transition that will be a uh, you know unsuitable transition where the calves will be subjected to a lot of uh, stresses and as a result post weaning slumps in performance right right so like i said um, it has to be as smooth as possible right so there are four 
abrupt changes are not recommended right so you have to make sure that whatever the changes are gradual right so for example uh, milk you don't just stop abruptly right so let's say the calf has been getting two liters twice a day for the last eight weeks and then suddenly tomorrow you don't make it zero liters right so you have you decrease the quantity over you know the last week or seven to ten days right uh, if you are giving twice a day uh, then you might bring it down to once a day if you are already giving just once a day then you might reduce half the uh, the quantity right so uh, so we, we talked about the benefits of doing this even earlier right? so when the, the the milk volume is decreased on the one hand uh, it prepares the calf for you know weaning right it, it's not an uh, abrupt shock right so the calf knows okay milk is decreasing right so calf gets used to that and on the other hand uh, because the calf is getting hungrier with less milk it will eat more concentrate or calf starter, uh, which will hasten rumen preparation for roughage, uh, receiving roughages, right? Rumen development will be uh, increased, right? Um, so, for all these reasons, you know, we nowadays recommend gradual weaning, gradual changes, right? Um, so, this gradual change is not only with milk. Right, but also in concentrate feeds, right? Introducing changing concentrate feeds from uh, calf starter to uh, adult feed, the changing the roughage, right? Remember, right now we are giving uh, straw, right? And we have to introduce uh, fresh grass or hay, right? Um, or might be even silage, right? So, all these are roughages, right? Uh, the silage has a fair bit of uh, rough edges, right? Um, so, uh, and then also changing housing, right? So, all these stressful events need to be managed uh, gradually, right? Without introducing abrupt changes, right? So, this is an example of uh, such a smooth transition or gradual changes practiced by you know this uh, center in of university of minnesota right now this doesn't mean this is what you need to practice right uh, you need to prepare something that is suitable to your um, setup your local area your available resources etc etc however the fundamentals will be the same right so look at this now they been at six weeks of age right meaning the calves consume generally because because of their uh, the, the management practices right so generally by six weeks of age you know calves start consuming uh, one kilogram of calf start right which means their rumen are ready, ready for weaning right develop sufficiently so they wean at six weeks right but they don't change all the other things at the same point right so they will keep the calves for two additional weeks in the same nursery barn right same calf starter no hay right so the only change that was done here was stopping the milk right so they stopped milk at six weeks but they let the calves uh, stay in the same premises same calf pen same calf barn right uh, same calf starter and same roughage right then at eight weeks uh, that's when they move to move the calves out of the individual calf pens and they move them into a uh, group pens right which you can call a grover barn also right and then so that's eight weeks and then they still don't change the uh, the concentrate right or hay right? so they leave them in with the same calf starter for another week so now they are nine weeks and it is at nine weeks that they uh, introduce grain or and hay right 
so so this is a very so these these four events that we talked about milk concentrate rough age housing see how they uh, the, these four events are spread over three weeks six weeks stop milk eight weeks change housing ninth week uh, you know change starter right so on the eighth week they uh, change right and then uh, on the uh, eighth week they give uh, continue ninth week they change a starter and on the tenth week after doing this change that's when they introduce grain and hay right so like i said this you don't have to follow this exactly uh, uh, different farms have established their own practices based on the breed based on the climate based on the resources based on the available labor so on and so forth right so the take home message here is weaning is a stressful event if you don't manage it properly right even if you manage it properly it will still be a stressful event to a certain extent so you have to me take measures to ensure that the transition is as smooth as possible right so you have to take certain measures to minimize this these stresses right and these these measures are spreading out these four changes related to milk concentrate roughage and housing over several weeks right so that is critical if your transition uh, is to be, be done successfully right if weaning has to be done successfully right so remember that right? so you also have to remember so although I, I I've talked about this earlier also so although we give all these criteria uh, one kilogram of carb starter uh, and all that not all animals will do that right some animals will eat up to as much as two kilos when the majority are eating one kilo uh, others might be eating two kilos per day right and there will be another group that eats you know still 400 500 grams right but that's this group right so you can't expect all animals to eat one kilogram right there will be animals that eat less or more right so you don't have to you don't have to keep all of these animals till the end right so you you have to practice animal selection right so the ones that are not performing well have to be uh, gotten rid of right there you have to cull animals you can cull calves as early as uh, you know at the time of weaning right poor performers you need to identify and cull them right so remember uh, th this uh, you you can't you cannot expect all animals to perform the same way uh, not everybody will eat the same not everybody will grow at the same rate so on and so forth right um so so remember as I, so what we talked about was weaning of dairy calves right now in sri lanka we don't have an established beef industry but in countries western countries that do have a beef industry um so they don't practice all these individual calf pens etc right the calves together with the, are in the field grazing together with their mothers right and the rest of the herd um, so these animals right you know uh, cannot be weaned as early as um, two months or three months or whatever there is nobody to monitor how much calf started they eat and all that right you simply cannot monitor them so traditionally uh, conventionally these animals um, had, had suckled their mothers uh, as late as seven months right uh, so, so however nowadays they are trying to wean as early as five months and for beef calves five months is considered early weaning right but for dairy calves five months would be very late right so we uh, for be, uh, dairy calves we want to shoot for two months eight weeks right 
uh, but for beef calves that is not practical right so if you can wean calves by five months that can be considered a very good uh, achievement right um, so one of the problems with uh, beef is you know so even if you try to wean them they will con consistently be constantly be with their mothers right so if the mother has milk you know the calves will uh, go on suckling the mothers um, so what there is a small this gadget uh, this is called the calf wiener we have uh, some uh, demo models at the ambulatory clinic also do check them out when you get a chance right so you fix this gadget to the mouth right you notice the sharp spikes or thorns on this gadget right so what happens is when the calf tries to uh, so let's say at five months you make sure you put this on the calves right so when the calf tries to uh, suckle the mother for, for one it interferes with the suckling process the cow, calf can't get the tongue out properly uh, and then uh, through this to the teeth and on the other hand these um, sharp thorns you know they would hurt the mother and the mother would you know go away from the calf and we would not feed the calf right so all these help in uh, expediting weaning in beef calves right right um so that that is important to understand the difference between dairy and beef uh, calf weaning okay right uh, so if you don't now so i we, we talked about um, you know the different consequences you know post weaning slump and all that right uh, so there, there there is another very prominent condition right so now you know um uh, human beings uh, we we don't like this right we don't like big bellies right uh, what is considered healthy is this right slim uh, figures right so it stands the same for calves as well so how do you do this by making sure by watching your diet right so it's the same goes for calves as well if you don't properly watch their control their diet they are going to develop this right anybody knows what this is called and uh, this is called pot belly uh, we call these calves pot bellied calves right so some people even veterinarians unfortunately think this is due to worms right so this is not due to worms uh, so many veterinarians have told me ah we we, we always think this is worming problem we give them deworming tablets but it doesn't work right so no wonder it doesn't work because this is not caused by worms this is caused by improper development of rumen premature introduction of foragers to a rumen that is not ready to digest foragers right so that is what causes this right? so you know in an adult animal right uh, if you you know when the animal eats foragers you have all these papilla you have all the muscular structure develop you have all these microbes right that digest this into you know volatile fatty acids and microbial proteins and all that good stuff right however you know calves don't have this mechanism right so they have a small rumen right uh, and if, if it's not developed properly right they have a small rumen the papilla are not properly developed their muscular structure is not properly developed the volume is not there um, the surface area is not there the microbes are not there right so the the logistics infrastructure are not properly developed and if you add foragers to such a rumen right this cannot be digested or this cannot be properly fermented right so because it will be undergo very slow fermentation right and as you keep adding on to that right it won't be able to uh, digest it or absorb it right and 
so instead of getting that you will get this right so in fact if you keep on continuing doing that right uh, you are going to have it can lead even to impaction especially if water is restricted right so remember the characteristic features of pot belly would be distended rumen right due to the slow slow fermentation right so slow fermentation it cannot get uh, digested so it will just you know rot there and accumulate distend with distension of the rumen right like this otherwise you have to have a flat belly in calves also like that right so very rarely if the calves also undergo water restriction very rarely uh, it can lead to impaction of the rumen also right so in summary remember uh, pre-weaning calf management you know your goal is not only to you know increase body weight right but also importantly to improve rumen develop the rumen size papilla muscular wall uh, microbes right water volume we talked about all these different aspects right so that is your goal right and then you know all this capillary development and how do you do that uh, by giving uh, uh, the intensive calf feeding management that we talked about right um, so if you don't have uh, so it, it's like um, uh, you know so if you, you can have the best car in the world right and if it doesn't have a you know good engine however beautiful the external body is right, it won't be able to perform with a uh, junk engine like this so similarly in cattle also you need to have you you just because it's large and you know high quality genetics and all that it won't be able to perform well if it doesn't have a properly developed rumen right so just a small example right so that is very very important right and uh, the smooth transitioning from milk based to solid based diet with minimal um, post weaning slump right all these are uh, interrelated right so i hope you understand that and that concludes our calf management lectures right so there are there are some minor things that we don't want to spend a lot of time on right but you need to be aware of this you need to read up and learn about these things we will be doing a practical where uh, you know you will be doing ear tagging so we may not have uh, enough calves in where we will so we will you know usually practice this on goats right we have plenty of goats uh, so you can practice ear tagging uh, on goats right so identification is extremely important nowadays we do ear tagging uh, but traditionally they did uh, you know fire branding or freeze branding uh, then tattooing right so nowadays you even have these computer chips right um, so when a calf uh, or a cow or calf walks by a certain you know tag identifier it know it gives all the details about the about the calf or cow right uh, so these are computer chips you can um, you know um, put them in subcutaneous locations in the ear or neck or wherever right so there are certain preferred locations so identification is extremely important uh, because that facilitates you know record keeping okay you know okay this animal is a higher uh, producer whereas this animal is not right so when you have dozens of animals you can't keep track of them so you have to have a way to identify animals right so that is very important and you do that uh, at a very early age right uh, matter of few days of age you do ear tagging in fact on the very first day when the calf is uh, born and moved to away from the mother you tag the calf with the ear tag 
because you know that you, it's related to the mother's um, ID. And so before you separate the calf from the mother, you need to tag the calves so that you know the relationship. Because after, because if you uh, try to tag afterwards, you may lose track of the calf. Right. So another thing that you do, uh, one of the at early age is removal of supranumerary teeth. You know, some calves ca ca are born with more than four teeth, right? Uh, so we know the other has four mammary glands, right? So these extra ones won't yield milk, right? So they will just get in the way, when, especially if you are using a milking machine or even manual milking, these extra teeth will interfere with the process. And it's uh, it becomes a major surgery when you try to remove them when they are adult animals, right? So you try to remove them when they are young, right? Um, so, in fact, certain countries, uh, the recommendation is if they have supranumerary teeth, don't use them, just cull them because it, it's genetically inherited, right? So, if you uh, make them adults and breed them, you know, their offspring are also likely to have them. Therefore, just simply cull them. But countries like Sri Lanka, we cannot afford to cull a calf just because it has extra teeth. So, what we do is we just remove them. Right, uh, and then you know we also do something called debudding or disbudding, right? Um, so dehorning, I'm sure you have heard of. Dehorning is removal of the horns uh, when calves, when in adult animals, right? When they grow proper horns, right? Uh, but you know, in the early stage when they are born, right? Uh, they don't have horns, but they have horn buds, right? Horn buds. So you can remove the horn buds, right? So it's a lot less complicated than uh, dehorning when they are adults, right? So we call it de debudding or disbudding, right? You, there are different ways to do that. Uh, you can use a dehorning, a debudding iron, right? Which uses heat and electricity. Or you can, there are these uh, chemical caught, chemical pastes that you can apply which does the job, so on, right? So uh, I want you to read an update about this also, the different methods available, at what age you do these practices, etc, etc. Right, so um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because these are really simple things. And when it comes to buffalo management, buffalo calf management, uh, the principles are the same. Just one thing you have to pay extra attention to is the, the thermoregulation, right? So as you know, buffaloes have uh, a thick skin and a few uh, hairs, right? And sweat glands for their uh, thermoregulation mechanism is a little on the poor side we say right so that's why they do all this wallowing in mud and water and all that so uh, you have to do some thermoregulation uh, management heat management depending on the climate there right? so you might have to think of uh, water sprayers misting etc etc uh, for buffalo calves right so other than that uh, buffalo management is the fundamentals of course we don't go into all this intensive calf feeding and all that intensive management but ideally you can practice those as well to you know get superior uh, quality animals right okay so that concludes all the lectures for calf management right so from next lecture onwards it would be on heifer calves and then adult animal milking and housing management Okay, so this was a very long um, uh, section in the dairy management section. I hope you learned and enjoyed, right? So don't forget to answer all the questions to get maximum out of these video lectures. Thank you very much, guys.